Hey there, StarCraft fans! It's Falcon Paladin coming at ya with yet another edition of StarCraft Root War Remastered! Today it's going to be a match between Mana and Zicky Here in Heartbreak Ridge, left side of the map, it is the yellow Protoss player from Poland. It is Mana. And on the right side of the map, it is a Hungarian Zerg player named Zicky He joined Mouse Esports in 2009 and was one of their high-profile members. He beat Mon Dragon before he joined Mouse Esports in a tournament where he was not expected to progress very far. So he is very talented, and I'm expecting him to give mana all that he can handle here on Heartbreak Ridge. Man, a lot of good games here on Heartbreak Ridge. Hit that like button if you like mana. Hit that like button if you are rooting for Zicky. If you're here for Zicky, let me know in the comments, because I've actually never heard of him before today. But he has a pretty darn long Liquipedia entry, so... I don't know. He's 31 years old now, so he started uh, started playing back in 2007 or 2008, which would put him, uh, yeah, that makes sense, like 18 or 19 when he started playing Brood War competitively. All right, so pool first here from Zicky. Looks like a nine pool. And pro scouting here is mana because, you know, you never know when you're going to have an early pool from a Zerg player, and mana is a very, very cautious very cautious Protoss player. I can tell you that much here. What's he gonna do? Alright, so he sees the spawning pool and says, okay, so I can still go ahead and uh, forge expand here just to make sure I need to throw down a cannon. Maybe pull the probes a little bit, depending on how many Zerglings hatch out of these eggs and from these larvae. And that's why the probe is still here. Just checking to make sure that um, actually Zerglings come out. Because if it's just drones, and this is just a feint here from Zicky, then no cannon is necessary, but oh, hang on a second. He's taking it pretty seriously, and yeah, he, he should as well here, because there are going to be six Zerglings coming across the map very, very quickly here. And Man, you got scouted, dude. You got scouted. Why not just two Zerglings? Why not just two to chase away the probe? And then you can expand that much sooner. Oh, hang on a second. Hang on a second. You're going to win this fight. Yeah, you're going to win this fight. Ooh, probe actually goes down. That's a bit of a victory. A bit of a blunder there for mana. You don't want to lose that probe over here anyway. So the hatch coming up. On the other side, we have the cannon. Mana's going to go ahead and expand behind this. The one cannon's not going to be uh, actually enough to hold this. You're going to want to hold the wall with a couple probes. Depending on exactly how this is stacked up from Zicky. Zicky seems to know what he's doing. He's got an overlord up here checking things out. Gateway up to help wall this off, and man, can they get through? They're trying. They're going for it. Oh, they're not even there. You go. Oh, this is so bad for mana. You can, nice block, though. Okay, that could have been four Zerglings, but instead it's just three. In the hands of somebody like Jadong, three Zerglings and your base this early as Protoss means death, man. It is so hard, so hard to stop this. He's going to scout everything you're doing for the first forever until you can get a Dragoon out, basically, which is quite a long time if you want Forge Expand. And yeah, I mean, at this stage, what we're looking at here is uh, our happy little puppy Zerglings here on the Carbot skin. Or the StarCraft cartoon skin. Just being a nuisance and trying to kill some of these probes if they can. Look at how much mining time Mana is losing because of this. Oh, we got one of the Lings, though. That's good. That is really good stuff right there. I know somebody's going to ask in the comments, what is this? What is this children StarCraft I'm looking at? Well, it's, uh, it's StarCraft cartoon. There's a YouTube channel called Carbot Animations, which actually does a lot of different cartoon animations for Blizzard games, such as World of Warcraft, such as Hearthstone, such as Starcraft, uh, all sorts of different popular titles from the Blizzard company. And he's so popular that I think this is the first time he's been asked to do this. Blizzard asked him to make a full-fledged skin for Starcraft Rude War, which he did. He skinned everything, every tile set, every unit, every animation in the game. It's incredible. He also did all the portraits for all the different units here, which... Uh, see, you can see down here. You can see them when they're talking in the game. The campaign was reskinned as well, so you can play through StarCraft 1 and StarCraft 2 in the cartoon skin. And it's awesome. It's so good. Anyway, really good guy. Uh, you should check him out. On YouTube if you haven't already I like his stuff quite a bit I haven't watched all of it I'm not like a religious follower just because well I don't have a lot of time in my day but uh, one of these days I should just catch up on all the car stuff and call it good I mean, these lings are so annoying 
A probe on the other side is actually getting some scouting done too, which is nice. Metabolic boost is about 50% complete, which uh, basically means that this probe should be able to get home. Third hatch is done though from Zicky, which I really like. Recognizing the Forge expands here. He's doing a pretty good job keeping these alive. He lost the first one a little bit quicker than I feel like he should have. Oh, got a probe. Hey, got a probe losing one of the links. No, both the links survived that encounter. Good stuff, man. They are injured, though. Two kills, really. Two kills and one kill there. So three total kills on these links. Zicky is kind of killing it in the early stages here. That, by that, I mean he's killing probes really effectively. His speed is almost done. And this poor zealot is not going to be able to catch them at all. I can't believe we're not making a Dragoon. Mana, you're losing probes here, my guy. You're up 29 to 21, which I totally understand. Oh, nice block with the probes. Nice block. Oh, that Zergling ran into his death for some reason. All right, that wasn't very cool. That was not a good move, my friend. All right, so we're good. Zerglings are out. They've got the speed. That's a Hydralisk Den. Oh, that's a Spire. Ah, yes. Going for the Spire because he saw the Stargate because he recognized that the Corsairs are on the way. So he's going to want some Scourge to deal with those really standard stuff here. Nothing too crazy. A Zealot made it all the way over to the third base. And the drones have to get pulled as a result. Look at all this lost mining time. Get out of there, drone. Don't get killed. One more shot. You're dead. And yeah, so the drones and the Zerglings are fighting. Zealot ends up getting another kill before he's taken down. A little bit of annoying play there, but Zicky had enough flings on hand to manage it. Macro Hatch coming up at the natural base. Loving that stuff. Spire's done. And are there Scourge out is the question. Or is he not going to make any unless he feels like he needs to? Production tab says no. Says there are no Scourge on the way, nor are there any Scourge on the map because these are not Scourge. Another Zealot out. Boy, man is trying to get some stuff done, but... Not really accomplishing a lot. Zicky, did he not lose a Zergling there? Did he not lose a single Ling? That's pretty good stuff. And another macro hatch. I am loving what Zicky is selling here, guys. I'm kind of feeling like he can win this game. It's always fun to find a new player who's great at StarCraft. And some of these older replays and then cast them in the new client. Whether it's the remastered client or whether it's the cartooned client. I'm just happy. Happy to cast StarCraft on a daily basis for you guys. And hope you're enjoying it too. Now, here are the Scourge. And those Corsairs are hanging out by a cannon very intelligently. Their pilots have been given strict orders to stay by the cannon or maybe dart out and maybe kill a couple Scourge if you can. And bam, Scourge down, very nice. Oh, it does take, or it does take two Scourge to kill a Corsair. So one Scourge by himself, not really gonna do a whole lot here. But it's a three basing Zerg, got a Hydralisk Den. And going for speed, Dark Templar on the way from mana. Interesting. He's going for a Dark Templar opening. Dark Templar Corsair, man. It is a classic, tried and true opening for PvZ. It is honestly pretty effective stuff, I gotta say. Corsair moving around. I mean, the problem here is that uh, if this was played when? Probably around 2010, 2011, if I had to guess. The thing is, strategy's been around for so long, I just don't see Zicky dying to it. And it might hurt him. The Hydras pop just a little bit too late to save their Overlord buddy, but these Hydras are alive. Corsairs want nothing to do with four Hydras, that's for sure. And then there is an Overlord coming up to the natural base. Scourge chasing on in, gonna get a hit! Get him! No! They exploded on the wrong ones! Gotta make a decision! There we go. And somebody said in the comments the other day they thought that Corsairs were a little bit faster or vice versa than Scourge, but no, they have the exact same move speed at top speed. If there is deceleration and acceleration involved because you're changing directions or speeding up or slowing down, yes, you can get caught. But look at this, at top speed, not gaining ground, man. I'll tell you that much. Don't go in there, Zicky. Oh, I can't believe that second shot got him. He just went too far, flew too close to the sun. And that DT has to come home. DT is very upset about this. I love the DT animation, maybe above anything else in StarCraft. I love the little Zerglings and the Ultralisks, but look at this guy. <laughs> look how serious he is. Hacks down that Zergling, hides in the bushes. Hydralisks coming over saying, something just killed that Zergling. We're pretty sure it was a DT. Hydra's pushing on in though, recognizing, all right. Gets this stuff done here before Storm is complete. And Storm is not complete. Storm is about 40, 50% there. And the Hydras are ready to rock. They almost have range. Range is so close to completing. They got an Overlord in case a DT shows up and tries to ruin their day. But uh, that's a lot of Zealots. That's a high number of Zealots. And Legs is almost done. Okay, these Hydras actually might consider get th getting the heck on out of here. Look how cool the High Templar are too. 
floating, with my arms folded and my cape billowing behind me. Yeah, this is a lot of Zealots. Actually, Zealot Templar are pretty good against Hydra, as it turns out. Not bad against the Lurkers either, if you can storm the Lurkers down and jump on top of them with your Zealots from all directions and not come at them single file. But okay, I mean, that's a lot of Hydralisks with range. That cannon does not stand a chance there. Good storm. Cannon goes down. Zealot's getting killed because they're on hold position. Now they're moving out. They're moving out to join the party. Great storm there again. Just melting these Hydras. Ling's in the front. They're trying to buffer for their Hydra friends. Ling Hydra, really great. But another fantastic storm from Mana. And another! I'll have another, says Thor in the coffee shop in New Mexico. My gosh, I'm telling you, the storms are the answer to Hydras. If Storm did not exist, Hydralisks would murder Protoss in every match of StarCraft Brood War from now until the end of days. Zicky is taking a fourth base, which is nice. I love the fourth base concept here. I'm assuming that probe's coming down to take a third at the 11 minute mark. It seems like he should, at the very least. All right, so now that Storm exists, well, that's going to be the answer to most of what Zerg can do. Uh, lurkers, yeah, Storm can handle them, Storm can handle Hydras, Storm can handle, I mean, Defilers uh, to some extent here, but what you're going to really want, possibly in this situation, I mean, definitely Defilers, right? 100% Defiler, I kind of feel like some, uh, Mutas would be good here if the Corsair count gets whittled down. Four Corsairs is too many for you to do Mutas at all, I don't think that's what we're going to see here from Zicky whatsoever. He's just making more Hydras, getting more upgrades for his dudes too, which is nice. He does have the plus one attack already. He's already got that range we saw. One one is done. The gateway units for mana. Another macro hatch. I gotta say, Zerg players that make a lot of macro hatches do very well. I've noticed that the win percentage in games where Zerg gets macro hatches is better than when they don't. I'm telling you, he's focusing these Corsair down. Kind of like it. I really do. I mean, he has the Spire already, so he could tech switch into Muta at any time. He could bank up a bunch of gas here. If he already has a bunch of gas, he could pump out a five, six, maybe even eight or ten Mutalisks and really go to town here. Storm dodge and whatnot. Although Archon production has begun specifically, well, to deal with everything. They're pretty good against Zerglings, pretty good against Lurkers here, and pretty good against Mutalisks. They are bad against Hydras. We have seen ZVP games where the Protoss goes for mass Archon, and the answer for that is just to go back into Hydralisk if you're the Zerg, because you probably switched out of it to go for things like, well, more Zerglings, and, well, more Defilers and Lurkers and stuff against this more gateway, regular old gateway composition. I guess Archons are technically gateway units, because they come out of gateways, but I don't feel like they count for some reason. They're more of a Tier 3 unit, because you have to have the Templar Archives for them, right? Right. Right. 148 to 103 supply. Man is killing it. He does have a 20 worker lead on Zicky too. Kind of feel like Zicky needs more workers, but I don't know. He's okay for saturation. This doesn't feel like he's oversaturated anyway. So, mana, good composition, man. What else do we expect from this guy? He's mana. He is one of the more popular players on the channel. Everything I cast with mana is pretty much guaranteed to get about a 30% view count bump over anything else. So, it's a good thing I have a lot of mana replays in my folder. Tons of against Morrow, by the way. Mana Morrow is one heck of a practice regiment or something. These guys working together for a long time to get better at StarCraft, it feels like. Anyway, yeah, this is the Hungarian Zerg. I mentioned that earlier. I'm not sure how many players from Hungary I have in my replay packs. I, I mean, I don't... I don't feel like I know of anybody else from Hungary. It's not necessarily a very strong country with StarCraft. I say that as someone from the United States of America who is not very great at StarCraft either. We have our players, okay? We have our good players, but um, none of them have one like super major championship championships like at BlizzCon or anything like that. It'd be nice, but yeah, maybe one day. Hive upgrade coming in over on the right side of the map. Still, 170 to 127 for mana is insanely good. He's got the Storm. He's got the Dragoons. He has the Archons. He should be able to handle these Lurkers. Are we not going Defilers today? I'm realizing. Zicky feels like Defilers are for the weak. So, um... Okay. 
baits out a storm. Doesn't take too much damage from it. That's really nice play. Enjoying that. Just trying to get free shots off. Free damage off on Archons is nice. Yeah, this group, they're just, you know, if he loses these Hydras, it's not the end of the world. But I can't believe he's pushing Mana back with that. That's insane. But Mana did manage to sneak a fourth base. While Zicky's on four bases himself. Ah, there we go. Taking a top left. Zicky trying to stay ahead on that base count. Versus the Protoss, as you're going to want to do. Kader and Amulet coming on in. Support Bay on the way. Maybe for Reavers. Reavers are known to wreck Hydralisks and Lurkers. And Zerglings and Ultralisks. Reavers are kind of a good unit. Their weakness is they can't shoot up. So Mutalisks and Guardians destroy them. But who's going to make Mutalisks when there are this many Dragoons out? And who's going to make Guardians, especially when there's this much Storm out? That is Guardian's weakness, is the storm. Ten lings in production. If the Zealot counts a little bit too low, Zerglings are going to be kind of awesome here. In this largely Dragoon army. I'm not sure why there are so many Overlords up in this plateau, but... Maybe get out of there? This is a very heavy crossing point. And Mana's taking the bottom right. So we just split this map across the middle, diagonal-wise. Like I like to cut my peanut butter and jelly sandwiches. And by that I mean jam. I'm actually a strawberry jam guy never really been much of a grape jelly person, even when I was a kid. And my mom would make me pack my sandwiches every day, which was really nice of her. But to this day, she hates making sandwiches because she made so many when my brothers and sisters and I were growing up. Uh, really, my mom was a great person, it turns out. Love her a lot. All right, coming on in. The lurkers are stabbing through. The hiders are trying to flank from the top side, but the zealots are getting right on top of the lurkers, but there are just too many. There are just too many of them with that plus two attack doing 20 plus four splash damage. Uh, your zealots can be good. They can have legs. They can have armor upgrades. They don't want to go in there. Not with that many lurkers and not from a straight on ahead angle, right? If they could get a surround here, they'd feel better about it. There's just too much zerg. This game is bananas. We're at 16 minutes and mana is maxed out on how many bases? Five bases here on Heartbreak Ridge. That's the max you can get without stealing one from your opponent. Pretty good split against the Storm, losing two or three Hydras. Zealot gets lost in control there. Oh, a couple Dragoons go down in exchange for a bunch of Hydras along that top side. What is this? Where are these probes going? Are they sacrificial probes, or can they not get in here? Uh, probe. Oh, I think they're trying to get... They're trying to get over there, and they can't? Is this a hard wall? <laughs> I think that's a hard wall. No mana. Reavers are out, though. Reavers are just smiley. Smiley boys, those guys are. Poor Zergling. Poor, poor Zergling. All right, so Scarab damage upgrades coming in. Wow, that increases the damage of Scarabs from 100 to 125 splash, which is probably overkill. We don't see that upgrade a lot in these games just because it's like, man, 100 damage is already a bunch. Yeah, yeah, it is. More Archons in production, going for Plague. So Zicky does want to get some Defiler play in here at some point, although according to the production tab, there we go. We do have some Defilers here. We have Ultras too, which... Uh, I don't think Ultras are great in ZVP. They're really good in ZVT in some situations. You can win games with Ultras in ZVT, but ZVP, it's like the Dragoons are really good against them, and the Archons are really good against them, and the Zealots are really good against them, and the Reavers are really good against them, and... There's just too much stuff that's great against Ultralisks for the Protoss has in their arsenal. Man, that upgrade, that scared, Scarab upgrade's done. It is almost done here. And just a lot of posturing, a lot of dancing about here on the map. Again, when you're maxed out, if you let your opponent max out, it's bad. You should try to kill them when you have an upgrade. Well, when you have an army advantage over them. And it looks like Ziggy's trying to take down this base if he can. There are three Reavers in this base, though. I don't think you want to go in with Hydra. Dark Swarm's not going to matter either because of most, most of the damage here from Scarabs is Splash and therefore is not affected by Dark Swarm. Some Plagues would be kind of incredible, guys. If you, oh my gosh, you have full energy. Do it. Do it. Plague the thing. Plague the thing. Not plaguing the thing. All right. Well, man, man, again, just kind of posturing. Is this a drop? Hey, we have a drop. There are no High Templar here either. Guys, you're getting super dropped in this bottom right, but the cannons actually are handling this pretty well because there was no Dark Swarm brought along, and these things don't have the best upgrades either. 
Is he still unloading stuff? He's still unloading stuff here, but it's not enough, actually. Okay. Well, that could have been awesome. Hey, look, it's a dark swarm. Oh, now that the Reavers are pulled over that way, we can get in and actually do some stuff. Great storm, though. Oh, gosh, the storm. Okay. Well, three lurkers. Four lurkers went down to that storm. The Defiler! Trying to what here? I don't know. Try to die to storm, it would seem. What are these Scourge doing here? Are they going after observers, maybe? Maybe. This is just really ill-fated from Zicky. I don't like it very much. You got a plague down, so that's some strawberry jam there all over that stuff. Nana decides this is actually worth worrying about now. Just comes right on in to engage here. We've got Ultras, we have Dark Swarm, we have Defiler ready to cast Plague, but Nana running away does catch a Plague on some of his Dragoons, but not much else here. Yeah, the Zealots are not affected by Dark Swarm at all, and the Ultra gets surrounded. And absolutely massacred there. Some of this stuff dies, but the Nexus survives, and that's what matters for mana. So yeah, 182 to 171. Both players lost some stuff there, but uh, yeah, I kind of feel like Zicky could kill this base. I guess now that Reavers live there, though, perhaps not as easily. Yeah, I'm trying to figure out, or, or, or figure out what you want to do. Oh, okay, apparently the answer is going to be Mass Ultralisk. They've got plus two attack. They've got plus five armor. Here we go, flanking from all directions. That's a lot of Ultras coming from that left side, trying to jump on top of these units and getting a full surround on them. Yeah, man, Archons blowing Zealots hacking away with their side blades, but the Ultras are too strong, and they're going to go ahead. I think they're going to win this battle. The Storm actually doesn't do a whole lot to them, especially if they're moving. Oh, the Dragoons, though. Kappa, kappa. Beautiful stuff, but additional Zerglings showing up, and suddenly Zicky's up 151 to 185. So, yeah, that's where you play Ultralisks in PvZ or ZVP. Is right there when it's a Dragoon Archon army. With a handful of Zealots, you can take it. He's going right after this base. Guess where there are three Reavers, though, guys? Guys, I just want to point out that there are three Reavers here. I just I have some thoughts on this matter. All your okay, yeah. All your ultras are dead. All right. Yeah, 125 damage, y'all. Nobody's killed a base yet. I mean, we're 22 minutes into this game and nobody has killed a base. How crazy is that? It's very crazy, I personally believe. You don't often see a game this long with no bases down. And I mean, the way that man is playing this right now, where are the scourge going? Are they just looking for observers? Okay, gosh. The Storm Reaver combo, all these Zerg are dead. All of them are dead. All my friends are dead. Pretty good play, but catching the Reavers would have been better. He doesn't want to get too close to them, though, and get blown up in the face by Scarab shots. Mana, I feel like he is just content to allow Ziki to run in here and mash his face against this wall and not really accomplish much. God, that Defiler dies too. How many kills do you have, Reaver? Seven's good, six good, one, not good. Seven kills on that Templar, 13 kills on that Templar, and Mana is just showing a masterclass on how to handle Zerg. It's splash damage, y'all. It's Archons, it's High Templar with Storm. It is Reavers with their Scarabs. You can get splash damage done against a Zerg, you're gonna win. Ooh, yeah, this base hasn't been taken. I always forget this base exists because nobody ever takes it unless they're disgustingly ahead. And at this point, I don't think anyone is disgustingly ahead. Does anybody even really try to drop? Except for this one. There was a drop down here. That was great. But I feel like Mana is missing an opportunity by not dropping the crap out of this and just murdering it. I guess why the, that's why there are Scourge there. To prevent that from happening. Greater Spire on the way from Zicky. Okay, he's decided the Reaver count is so high, he can actually afford to go Guardian here. Which, that Corsair count is scary, though. The High Templar count is not super scary, but with two High Templar, there's enough storms in there to take down a large group of Guardians because they love to clump up. So I don't know about this. Corsair... Oh, the Corsair count is high. The Hydra count is not high. Boy, look at this. How does he have eight Corsairs? He's just been making them, obviously. Wow, the follow-up DT Corsair play at 24 minutes. Who does this? Look who's got Mutalisks. Zicky. He's actually got Mutalisks here. 
Ultra's coming from the south side. That's a lot of Dark Templar all of a sudden. Corsair's murdering overlords wherever they can find them. More Ultras dancing into the party right now. Is it enough to win this thing? The Archon pulling back. There's Lurkers to contend with now. Zealots and DTs going after the drones, forcing them to flee from this 12 o'clock position. Archons trying to stand on in. Eventually, all of them do end up going down. Corsair's here to kill more of the Overlords, and there's nothing to stop them from doing it at all. Ten Hydra is in production for mana, recognizing where did all of these Corsairs come from? I don't understand how my Overlords keep dying. The answer is the late game Corsair DT transition. Okay, a couple Corsair go down, but there are still six remaining. Scourge doing their job on that one. Probably overkill a little bit there. It's only two Scourge per Corsair, and I think he came in with more than four. So uh, that is a problem. They will all explode on one target if you, if you tell them to, and then it's a bad use of uh, Scourge. But uh, yeah, man, more Overlords down. Can't, Zicky is not supply blocked right now is a testament to how good he is at not being supply blocked because holy crap. Hey, the center base was trying to take in by Zicky here, but Zergling or DT say no. Not allowed. Uh yeah, the hatch goes down. More overlords dying. Dude, some spores would be so good. These hiders cannot be all places and all things here. I cannot believe that mana's doing this. I think mana has got this game won. I don't want to call it early. I really don't. Is that... Oh, okay, faster shuttle movement. For a second there, I thought it was scout movement, which would be insane. So yeah, spore colonies are on the way. In certain places. Not here, though. Oh, the reaver drop to go after the greater spire. Takes it right down. No guardians for you, lads. I'm not sure that Ziki was planning on doing that anyway, just because, again, the Corsair count is high. No drones... Oh, man. One Reaver shot on those drones, I think, would have killed all of them. All of them, I say. More Zealot at the 12 o'clock position. This guy has a total of, well, five kills. Let's give him six. This guy is a hero. They're going to build a statue of him on ire. Or whatever. Chorus. Wherever the Protoss live these days. Defiler Mound. On the way for Ziki, apparently has died during the great reaver drop of 2019. Well, whatever, 2010, wherever this was played. Probe's actually here to commit suicide, specifically so that mana can free up supply to actually make army units. So that's nice. It's 198 to 145 right now. I mean, Ziki has to rebuild all of his tech, except for his Hydralisk den. Look at these probes, like, maybe we can get long distance mine. If we successfully pull that off, that would be awesome. Not doing it, but center base does belong to Zicky. He replanted the hatchery. What a boss. Who tries taking the center base in a closely contested game, especially one where they're down 50 supply? Oh my gosh, it's so many Corsairs. Mana wants to finish this off with Corsair DT Zealot. Okay, and a million Reavers. You know, I'm not even sure he needs anything else but the million Reavers. Gonna be honest with ourselves here. Uh, <laughs> this hurts. As a Zerg player, I see this and it hurts. I'm not... Okay, how do you handle this? You plague it, you surround it, you don't attack it head-on like this. This is incredible. Like, this is disgustingly good stuff. The Corsairs are flying in to fire a little bit. High Templar coming a little bit too close to the sun. It does end up getting out of there. But the Reavers are the true threat. To the Zerg Empire. Zicky's got more reinforcements coming in, though. Your Ultralisks are no match for the Reaver attacks, though. Again, the only balance for Reaver shots is that sometimes the Scarabs do no damage and sometimes they get stuck on stuff. They don't do friendly splash. It's 185 to 116. We're done. Zicky's out. He hasn't tapped out yet, but he can't handle this army. So you plague it, right? All this stuff is beautiful to be plagued. Hey, look at that! A beautiful to be plagued plague. All right, so the center base is down, but come on, you weren't having that one anyway, right? Uh, trying to jump on top of these Reavers a little bit. They are all really low on HP, but their shields are good. 
That's what matters here. But we're doubling up supply at this point. Ziggy's just trailing units in. Mana is going to handle this thing. These Reavers refuse to die. Just refuse. It will take some time for them to rebuild their uh, their Scarabs. So Ziggy gets a bit of a reprieve here, but he's got Lings and Hydras and Ultras. He's trying to handle this thing this way. He really can't go Mutalisks or Guardians because of the Corsair count that we have right now. That is so many Corsairs. That might be the most Corsairs I have seen in a late game PvZ ever on the channel. This is so good out of mana. He's like, you know what's good? It's Corsair DT at the 30 minute mark. If you're into that sort of thing. I'm not even sure the Zerglings have the upgrade. Do they have the upgrade? Attack speed, not telling me the attack speed. All right, here we go. So I'm talking about surround from all three directions. Might get one of the Reavers here, but you gotta focus the Reaver. The Reaver has two HP and it's not dead. Okay, that could have been better. That could have better, better target firing, but you know, it's it's fine. 183 to 70 total supply. Ugh. I mean, Ziki, I like what you did here today. I really do, but it's over, man. I understand you don't want to go until the fat lady sings. Hey, they got a Reaver. I think that's the only Reaver that's died today is that one. Yeah, I mean, you could jump on the Reavers and try to do that, but when they're flanked by two other Reavers, uh, it's not as good. It's not as effective. So mana's back up to be maxed out because why not? Why wouldn't he want to be maxed out here? Overlord's getting picked off. The number of Overlord's dead in this game has got to be around 20 or 30. It's insanely good. Also, the Zerglings don't have plus three attack. How's that even possible at 31 minutes? Upgrades, yo. Upgrades are a problem. Three Hiders, not enough to kill all of these Corsairs, and Overlords continue to fall at an alarming rate. And that's it. Ziggy GG's out. Mana is your winner in 32 minutes and 7 seconds. <laughs> Parting shot. Last second storm there from mana, and he leaves too. <laughs> what an amazing game. Holy crap. Ridiculous. A ridiculous match between two players that had a lot of fun today, I gotta say. Maybe not Ziggy. Maybe not Ziggy, because this composition is really, really hard to deal with. Especially in a map that doesn't have... Uh, very many wide open spaces. Like here's a wide open space and here's a wide open space and sort of this one, but definitely attacking in here is just little narrow chokes coming in from all directions and that's real bad stuff. End of the day, it's 333 across the board for mana. I mean, it's just all the upgrades you could possibly get upgrades to the Reavers. We have a shield upgrade, which does benefit the buildings. And that was really mana winning a game by not killing a base. I mean, he took the center hatch down, yes, but that doesn't really count. Zicky never lost his main, his natural, his third, his fourth, or his fifth. He didn't. He never lost any of those hatcheries. He got dropped in the main, lost some tech structures, but other than that, I think the hive is still there. Yeah, I don't think the hive died at any point. So, incredible... Just patience on display there from Mana, saying, I can beat you without killing any of your bases, which is not something I've seen in a game in a while, I want to say. So, nice job by Mana, expressing some dominance here versus his Hungarian foe. But yeah, end of the day, uh, just at the end of the day, he was able to get a bunch of bases up. He let Ziki do the same thing. He just made good trades, right? Let's check out that trades team, or the uh, trade score here. Overall, 261,000 points for mana, 207 for Ziki. And yeah, I mean, produced here is 700 Zerg units produced to 200 Protoss units produced. But then killed is 600 Zerg units down to 150 Protoss units down. That's it. I mean, you're like, oh, Zerg way out produced him. He did, but mana way out efficiented him in the murder scene. End of the day, not many buildings down from either side here. Resources, kind of back and forth. More gas mined from Ziki. Couple thousand more minerals mined and a couple thousand more spent overall for mana. But not enough to express the level of dominance. This is the tab that matters here today. You can produce 200 units and kill 600. Good ratio. It's a really good, really good ratio. So nice job by mana getting the win here in Heartbreak Ridge. But that's going to be it from me today. So this has been Falcon Paladin coming at you. 
with yet another edition of StarCraft Brood War Remastered. Go ahead, hit that like button, hit that subscribe if you like what you saw and what you heard today. You can also catch me on Twitter, Facebook, Patreon, and Twitch. All by Falcon Paladin, you, oh, slash Falcon Paladin. <laughs> and once again, thank you for joining me today. And until next time, as always, you take care of yourself. <laughs>